Hello everyone, my name is Mandel Man and welcome to my YouTube channel. Um, previously I created a, a CNC box and I got a good response over it and I had a lot of questions that were presented to me and I and most of them was about how to do the uh, 45 degree angle cut with the V car bit. So today I'm kind of gonna I'm gonna go over that with you um, and I'm gonna try to keep it sweet and simple. And so just to start, what I did was I put some measurements um, on the board for you to look at and take notes on. Okay, let's jump right into it. The actual board that I have is something I found in a scrap bin. And sometimes you can find some real good gems out of a scrap bin. And the board is actually 31 inches wide by five and a half inches tall. So I'm going to make all four of my box sizes within the 31 by five and a half. Okay, let me show you my profile. Now here's my profile. My box is going to be five and a half by eight and a half inches wide. So you need two pieces of those measurements to make a complete box. So my size, which is here, it's five and a half for the left side. The, the back will be eight and a half. My right side will be five and a half and the front will be eight and a half. And my total box um, will be cut out of, the, the total shape of my box will be cut out of a 27 inch wide piece and it will be four and a half inches tall. So that's this area here that this number here represents. And the reason why you see it set up this way, five and a half by eight and a half by five and a half by eight and a half, what I'm trying to do is create a continuous grain pattern around my box. Um, that's what the masters have done in the past, and there's no reason to change it. They make a lot of beautiful furniture and a lot of beautiful boxes. So, hey, I'm just giving you a, a few tips on uh, how to look like a master woodworker, even if you're not. Now let's go over the dado slots that I cut inside the boxes. Let's see if I can get this up for you. Okay. Okay, here are my dado cuts. My dados were 27.69 in width by a quarter inch high and a quarter inch deep. You see them represented here in the blue. Okay, and we're going to add, since this whole piece is a work and turn piece, and it's going to flip on the back side, it's a double sided piece, I'm going to add indexing holes for my pegs, and my indexing holes are here and here, and this will allow me to turn the board from top to bottom over and still register for the machine to to cut in precise areas. Now that we have all our paths, we're gonna do some tooling. So uh, let's get started really quick. Uh, first of all, <clears throat> let's draw or let's tool our indexing holes. We're gonna double click and as you can see, they're, they're pink now. We're going to double pick, double click. And the depth, the start depth is zero. The cut depth is 0.76. And the reason why it's so deep is because <clears throat> I'm going to drill through my actual uh, piece of wood down into my spoiler board. And then that'll allow me to um, be able to flip the board from top to bottom and just if the pegs are long enough, you can still, you know, you can just stick them straight in and you don't have to worry about your board um, uh, not being able to lay flush on your workpiece because I drill all the way through my work board. And 
it's thin, and that's why I can do that. Sometimes you're going to get a thicker piece of board, maybe a core four quarter board or an eight quarter board. You may not want to drill all the way through because your bits may not be um, as long or long enough to cut through those boards. So let's calculate and let's preview it. All right, here are my holes here, and we're going to select and we're going to preview it and you see those nice beautiful holes there <laughs> okay so let's go back to our 2d view and next we're going to add we're going to do our profile cut now remember this profile Overall, it's 27 inches wide by four and a half inches tall. And I'm going to select and make sure my profile is selected. And as you can see here, let's see. Let's, let's do something. That's not it. I selected the wrong one profile cutout. Here is my profile cutout and my board is going to start from zero, the start depth. My cut depth is going to be 0.62. My board itself is 0.61. I'm going to use an eighth inch end mill. I'm going to take eight passes and I'm going to cut outside the board outside the path. Normally, if I was machining this, I'll have tabs. Here are my tabs here, but for the sake of this video, I'm not going to do that because I want to show you how I can um, show you how the entire piece looks without the scrap material around it. And if I leave the tabs on, it won't allow me to show you that. So we're going to remove the tabs. We're going to select calculate and we're going to say OK. And we're going to close it and we're going to preview that. So yeah, let's preview it. Now, remember, I told you I want to show you how it looked without the the um, the scrap material around it. If I had tabs, I wouldn't be able to double click on the scrap and it disappear. So let's go back. Let's reset. And let's preview that again. And let's preview our peg holes again. And then let's go back. So now we're back in the, the 2D mode. Now we're going to cut the top and bottom dados, which is easy. I did it in two pieces or two paths. Let's cut the bottom. I'm not going to show you the top. We'll just cut the bottom because what I did is I made one path for one tooling for the top and one tooling for the bottom and then I merged them. So um, my zero start is my start depth is zero. My cut depth is a quarter of an inch. I used an eighth inch end mill and the reason why you want to use uh, a smaller end mill instead of one that's that size, the exact size is because the machine, um, for some reason, it doesn't allow it. It doesn't like it, whatever it is. You probably need room for, for any kind of um, offsetting allowance. So um, I did four passes and this time, I didn't cut on the outside. I cut on the inside because I need to fit something on the inside of that data. And I didn't add any tabs. You don't need any tabs. You don't need to ramp it or anything like that. You click calculate and say, okay. And this time I'm going to go to preview and I'm going to hit my merge dados. 
that I have down here and I'm going to select them and you see it cut both dados. Okay, I had to change the box size um, numbers here, the five, five inches, it was five and a half. You, so you guys aren't seeing things. <laughs> um, so um, I'm going to show you how to do the, the 45 degree um, cut um, with a 90 degree bit right now. What I had to do is I had to make a five and a half, or I mean, I'm sorry, a five by eight and a half inch rectangle for this um, side here. And for the eight and a half, I had to make an eight and a half by eight and a half rectangle for um, this particular square. And what I had to do is do it for each one of these. And what's very important about these, all four of these rectangles must line up you see I'm clicking four of them, must line up and they must lay on top of each other. Exactly, you see how tight this is? Their, their path lines are right on top, they're stacked right on top of each other. And that's important because when you have a, a bit going around, you want it to kind of hit the, the same spot over and over again. And this is the biggest secret to cutting a 45 degree angle with a V card bit, because there's there's not a single path that um, that the machine or the software will allow the machine to follow. So it has to be a closed joint or a closed path. And this is the way I did. it. So I just had to make sure this path was on top of this path. This path was on top of this path. And you see here my guidelines. Everything up here on the machine at the time was cutting air. I was just cutting air. The only time it was cutting the wood is when it was going across the grain. So it was air across the grain, air across the grain. For this one, air across the grain, air across the grain, which you will see. So <clears throat> let's go over and look at the paths for that. So the 40 degree, 45 degree cut, as you can see, all of those paths, let me click them all, one, two, three, four, were cut in this manner. The start depth was zero, the cut depth was 0.6, and if you remember, my piece was only uh, 0.61 inches in thickness. I didn't want to go through. I wanted to leave a little skin, a little skin on the board. Now, in order to create this path for the V 45 degree cut, I had to use the 2D profile tool. I'm not using VCarve, the VCarve feature at all. I'm using the same profile or the same profile tool that I use for using milling tools. So my start cut was zero. My cut depth was 0.6. If you guys remember, my piece was only 0.61 in the first place. And I didn't want to cut through. I didn't want to cut all the way through. I just wanted to leave a little skin and later on I could have just sanded it off or used a little uh, chisel to cut it off. If you watch the video you'll see that I did that. I used a 90 degree um, V cutting bit and it was a 1.5 inches in diameter. Um, I took three passes. I find it better just to take your time and just do several passes with the V carving bit instead of trying to do it all at once or two passes. I would have did three to four. And this time I didn't worry about the outside or the inside. I needed to be on the line, directly on the line. And that will make sure it's gonna follow the path that you see here 
all the way around. And you didn't have to worry about any of the other features here. Just hit calculate. And you see the arrows. They represent how the bit will be moving. It's going to go around and around. Okay. So let's preview that. All right. Now you see how it's cutting air and through the board. And the rendering is not showing air, but my wood piece was not as big as this. The rendering that you see is representing the spoiler board that I was using, the size spoiler board that I made. Remember I told you I made a 45 by, I mean a 46 by 12 inch spoiler board. That's the amount of, that's the wood you see that's being represented in this rendering at the time. So when I was cutting it, you saw it cutting air only. There we go. So now that we have that, I can click and get rid of the waste. And this is what's left of our work. You see how I left a little skin here? So I hope this was very informative and I hope I didn't miss anything. Um, and uh, I hope you learned some things because I learned some things even after I did this video. Um, I hope uh, that all is well when you get ready to do yours. And if you like this video, please select like, um, subscribe, uh, send the, uh, the link to your friends, your family, so I can get more likes and more subscribers so I can produce more of these videos for you. Um, this was my first time doing an application uh, um, video and uh, you know it was pretty interesting to, to try to, to pull off. So um, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to hear from you soon. If you have any comments please send them. If you have any dislikes just tell me why you didn't like it or why you liked it. I don't mind because I'm eager to learn and to really satisfy any questions that people may have in terms of uh, the projects that I that I create. So you guys have a great day. Keep on cutting wood, keep on having fun with it, and I'll see you soon.